Good morning, everybody. So my name is Pietro Massignan. Uh, I'm from the University uh, Universidad Politecnica de Catalunya, UPC in Barcelona, and I'm also working at ICFO. And today I'd like to tell you about uh, efficient detection of topological features in a variety of uh, systems that could range from the SSH to uh, some atomic systems and to uh, photonic systems. Uh, this is work, I, uh, it's, I'm a theorist. Uh, I work in collaboration with uh, Alexandra, who is here, and uh, uh, with Maria Maffei, which is a post uh, PhD in, uh, in ICFO, and with Maciek. In the, and uh, I will tell you about two experiments we did in collaboration with the uh, University of Illinois in the group of Bryce Gadway uh, on atomic wires, and, uh, and another experiment on photonic systems that we did in, in the collaboration with Filippo and Alessio and uh, in the group of Lorenzo Marucci in Naples. And uh, so here's a brief outline of the talk. Uh, just after some uh, introductory slides, I will switch to one-dimensional chiral models. And uh, in particular, we'll be focusing on uh, static SSH models, Su, Schrieffer, and Hager, which is schematically shown here. And then I'll, uh, I'll give you some uh, uh, introductions to, uh, to what we recently observed, the so-called topological Anderson transition. Uh, in disordered atomic wires. And then I'll switch, if I have time, to a periodically driven system, uh, which is a uh, photonic quantum walk. And uh, to analyze the systems, I will tell you of an observable we introduced, which is called mean chiral displacement, uh, which turns out to be a very efficient way of characterizing these one-dimensional chiral models. OK, so here is a brief of, I mean, uh, <laughs> My personal point of view may be influenced by the food in these days about modern condensed matter. So it's something where we have, uh, it's a very juicy and uh, tasty structure in, uh, in which we have lots of uh, different layers that we can stack. Uh, so from band structure and disorder, we can add topology, we can add external driving, we can have interactions, we can even have losses. And uh, so in this talk, uh, I will be mainly focusing on uh, band structure and disorder and topology and external driving, these four sides here. And so there's, as you can imagine, there's plenty of emergent phenomena when you mix all these uh, features. Uh, but one crucial point is how to actually observe this. And uh, in particular, for example, the topology is how can we detect it? Is there any way of, of doing so? And uh, so just uh, maybe may, some of you may not be familiar with topology, topology and the, topo the present role of topology in condensed matter. So let me give you a very brief introduction to this. So topological insulators are uh, uh, new materials that have been uh, uh, heavily studied in the past 20, 30 years, which are insulators in the bulk, but they present uh, robust current uh, edge states, uh, current current edge states. And uh, these, current, these edge states are protected by the topology of the bulk uh, against local perturbations. So then that can be, for example, disorder or defects. And uh, there's been an enormous progress in the study of these uh, materials in the past uh, 10 years, especially. Uh, the field has really exploded. And uh, for example, quantum spin hole has been uh, studied, uh, three-dimensional topological insulators, four-dimensional quantum hole uh, states have been studied. and. Uh, uh, both theoretically and experimentally. And uh, this topological insulator are uh, characterized in terms of the discrete symmetries they uh, uh, satisfy or break. And uh, in particular, the symmetries are time reversal, charge conjugation, and chiral symmetries. And depending on whether the symmetries are present or absent and their eigenvalues and their number of spatial dimension the model is in, uh, one can, for example, have uh, uh, in, uh, invariants which are Z numbers, like integer numbers, or Z2 numbers, just binary, uh, 0, 1. For example, the uh, Hofstadter model or churn insulators have no symmetries, and in two dimensions are characterized by the churn number, while uh, the chiral models I'm studying uh, have chiral symmetry, and in one dimension have a, are also characterized by a Z number, which is a different number called the winding. And this is what I'll be focused uh, uh, in this talk to. Um, OK, there has been uh, also uh, extensions to, of this characterization in terms of uh, other properties that the model can have. For example, if there, is, if there are interaction or disorder or crystalline uh, symmetries or time driving, then this uh, table needs to be extended in various, in various directions. 
so here is a brief overview about chiral systems, what has been done in the past uh, years. And uh, maybe this is the most prototypical system that has been studied. This uh, is a chain, one dimensional chain that uh, represents a molecule called polyacetylene, which is uh, known to support a very uh, robust uh, edge state, uh, current carrying states. And uh, for, the, for their discovery, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was given in 2000. Uh, in the past years, there's been a lot of uh, experiments in our community in, uh, with ultra-cold atoms in super lattices or in momentum space lattices or photonic systems in optical waveguides like in Jena here, cavity polaritons uh, or uh, even superconducting qubits. So all the systems realize one-dimensional chiral models and uh, which support the topological invariant I'm going to discuss. Um, here is a slide about the SSH model, which uh, presents the basic features of this model. So this, uh, it's a one-dimensional Hamiltonian that uh, would represent spinless fermions that can hop from sides uh, blue to red with uh, staggered tunneling, means, meaning that J is different from J prime. And uh, this naturally defines uh, two sublattices. Uh, blue sites are called A sublattices, and red sites are called B sublattices. And uh, so this also means that there exists a canonical basis where the Hamiltonian is purely off diagonal, can be written in this form. And uh, immediately this ensures that there exists uh, so-called chiral symmetry, which means that there exists a, a unitary Hermitian and local operator gamma that anti-commutes with the Hamiltonian. And uh, this, uh, if, if the system has uh, translational symmetry, this means that the Hamiltonian can be written in momentum space in this form or sigma Pauli matrices. And uh, if chiral symmetry is present, you can see that the sigma z is absent. So that means that this vector nk is orthogonal to z and uh, for any k. And the gamma operator the implementing the chiral symmetry is, uh, is directly the sigma z. And uh, this means that uh, since n of k must be uh, e, n of k must be a periodic vector in uh, in the Brillouin zone, this means that uh, the, there exists. Uh, you can see that the topological invariant characterizing these models is the so-called winding that describes as as k traverses the Brillouin zone. This vector n k can either turn around in the plane and do an oscillation, go back to itself, like in this case, or it can perform a full winding around the axis around the vertical axis. And in this case, we say that the model has winding one, or if it does two winding, we would have winding two, and so on. Uh, so this winding can be calculated if you know the Hamiltonian. For example, if you know the explicit expression of the vector nk, then you can compute. This just directly gives you the number of times the vector points around the, uh, the axis, the vertical axis. Or if you know the eigenstates, you can compute the winding as uh, the integral of a so-called skew polarization, which is this. Uh, product uh, between the eigenstates of the upper and lower band of the model. But uh, what if you don't know the Hamiltonian? I mean, what if you're given a system and you ask, is this system chiral or not? And you just have access to an observables. Can, actually, can you actually measure the winding? And uh, well, the answer is yes. And this, uh, it's actually very simple. This is what we came up uh, with Alexandra and, uh, uh, in this nice collaboration. Uh, so take, if you take um, an initial condition that is localized on a central cell of the system, like in this case, so you have an Hamiltonian and you put an initial condition like this that occupies the central cell with some random population, doesn't really matter. And uh, what you observe is what we term the mean chiral displacement. So you basically observe the product of the chiral operator times the unit cell operator, and uh, you measure this quantity in time. So this directly amounts to measuring twice, well, that's a factor two, the dis mean displacement on the A sublattice minus the mean displacement on the B sublattice. And uh, it's, well, it's very rather simple uh, to, dis to show that this is the chiral operator, this is the uh, position operator in momentum space, and this is the Heisenberg representation of this uh, operator. And so you, it's very simple to see that actually this converges in the long time limit, converges to the winding which is uh, given here because this is a rapidly oscillating function which, which averages out to one half to one. So this quantity directly uh, converges to the winding and performs a bulk measurement of topology. So you put an initial condition in the center of your Hamiltonian and in the, in the long time limit, this uh, observable converges to the winding you want. For example, here, 
the model is in the trivial phase for the green line, and you see the, the invariant, this quantity converges to zero. If the model is in the topological phase, this quantity rapidly converges to one. And if it's uh, in the uh, critical phase, so at, uh, the, at the critical boundary, the, the, the winding actually converges, this mean chiral displacement converges to one half. Uh, so it uh, not only detects topology, but even detects the topological boundaries in a correct manner. Uh, so the, the, this, uh, this quantity is uh, resistant to disorder. Uh, so for example, here we took an SSH model in the topological phase. We put independent disorder on all tunnelings, and uh, we average over disorder realization. And you can see that as long as the disorder is smaller than the gap, then uh, this quantity remains locked to the, to the invariant. When the disorder is too large, well, then topology breaks down, and, uh, and the, this, uh, this observable detaches from the uh, expected value. But that's, uh, that's uh, expected. Uh, so this observable works also for higher windings. For example, here we took a model that supports winding at like two or minus one, and uh, the, the observable converges to the expected value. And again, it converges always to the, to the correct value. If there is, at the, at the boundary between two topological phases, for example, here, the observable converges to the mean of the two phases, of the, the invariance in the two phases. Uh, so let me come to the, uh, this is the first experiment in which uh, uh, that was performed, we, we put it on the archive like a month ago, and it's an, uh, the first observation of uh, uh, topological transition from uh, uh, trivial to topological induced by the disorder strength. Uh, so here, they, what the system under interest was uh, atomic wires. Uh, so it's, it's basically an atomic ideal Bose-Einstein condensate, which is uh, uh, trapped in, and uh, illuminated by two laser beams uh, that perform a two photon Raman transitions. Uh, and, uh, but since these particles are free particles, they have a free dispersion. So the, the, two, the, uh, the two photon Raman transition needs to have different, uh, the, the transition to go up is always the same, but the transition to go down slightly differs depending on the state, momentum states in which the particle are. And this means that one needs to put a lot of different lasers here, which sounds like a nuisance, but actually it's a plus because this means that each of these uh, lasers allows to control independently the amplitude and the phase of this tunneling of the resulting. Uh, so the resulting uh, Hamiltonian is a one-dimensional Hubbard model with full control on uh, each tunneling strength and each phase of the model. And this means that in particular they can realize this uh, SSH model. This Hamiltonian has built-in chiral symmetry and uh, therefore it allows, it admits uh, uh, topological invariant. And uh, here it's uh, shown a calculation of this topological invariant. So here the invariant is one, and uh, across the red line where the, that is the critical boundary which corresponds to diverging localization length, the, the invariant goes to zero. And uh, so this is theory. This is an experiment in which they prepare at t t time t equals zero uh, a, a wave packet in this position, for example, and in presence of small disorder, the wave packet after some time, it starts to spread. And uh, here is the same evolution, but done with larger disorder strength. And uh, here is a uh, measurement of this chiral, uh, mean chiral displacement. You can see that when the, in the topological phase, uh, which is, so they're moving along this line, so they start off from topological region, and uh, well, the, the quantity rapidly averages to one, while if they are, the disorder is, is too large and they are uh, in the trivial phase, this quantity averages to a quantity which is much smaller than one. So when, uh, by, as a function of disorder strength, what they observe is, uh, is that the model, the disorder drives the model out of the topological phase. And uh, so this is a, uh, the transition from, this, from topological to trivial induced by the disorder. And uh, here they, they actually looked at a slightly different uh, uh, region. Uh, in which the model starts off uh, trivial and is driven into the topological phase by disorder. And again, the, the mean chiral displacement uh, that is able to detect this. Uh, this would be the shape expected for an infinitely sized system. The system is actually very small. It's only about, has about 10 steps, if I remember correctly. So the transition is heavily smoothed, but this, this observable goes above 1.5, uh, which is the, the minimum uh, threshold for observing this transition. 
Uh, well, okay, I think uh, in, in sake of uh, your coffee break, I will be very short here. Uh, I, so this is just an experiment we did uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Lorenzo Marucci studying one-dimensional chiral models in, uh, in a Floquet setup. So uh, these are photonic quantum walks uh, with uh, atoms carrying angular momentum, twisted photons. And uh, well, this is uh, one slide about discrete time quantum walk. So you have a one-dimensional uh, uh, system uh, with the spin one-half degree of freedom. And uh, a quantum walk is basically at each step, this particle can rotate over itself and uh, can perform a lateral translation. And then this, the algorithm repeats. So it's a very simple uh, algorithm, and uh, which is implemented in their experiment by uh, the, the walker's position is mapped onto the orbital angular momentum of the photons. The coin state, the internal degree of freedom, is encoded in the polarization of the photons. And the spin rotation is done by quarter wave plates. The conditional displacement is done by so-called Q plates. And uh, time is replaced by the displacement along the beam axis. So as they start off with a, moment, with a wave packet in the uh, in, uh, zero, M equals zero state, and at the end of the procedure, they have a, a wave packet that has walked in the space of orbital angular momentum, and they can detect this and basically read out the result of the uh, quantum walk. And uh, this is a, a periodic evolution, so it can be treated via, via flow cases uh, theory. So this means that the, you, the unitary operation, evolution operator is a, is a single application of W and Q. And uh, this represents a unitary operator U that you can, you can take its logarithm and get out an effective Hamiltonian H. And in momentum space, this is again a two by two matrix, so it, which has the same symmetries as the SSH model, so it admits the same invariant. Uh, but here the spectrum is two pi periodic, so the quasi energies are periodic. And uh, well, one can, read, one can compute the winding as a function of delta, which is a parameter controlling the strength of these Q plates. And uh, there are two phases. Winding can be 0 and 1. And uh, here is a measurement of this quantity for different initial polarization that doesn't matter. So the, the, the winding is correctly reproduces the, uh, the mean carrier displacement correctly reproduces the expected winding. One can check the ballpark and the correspondence. And so it looks at the spectrum with edges. And uh, well, actually, so there is uh, the appearance of one edge state at this point correctly predicted by this. but. Uh, at, at this value of delta, there is uh, the model, this, this, this uh, C goes to zero, but here there are actually two edge states, so one may wonder is the bulk boundary correspondence violate, violated? And uh, the answer is no. Uh, this is a periodically driven system, so the initial time uh, leads, so different initial times lead to different uh, unitary evolution operators. And, uh, the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian don't depend on time, on the initial time, but the eigenstates do, and therefore the winding does. So uh, periodically driven uh, uh, systems don't have a single winding, but they can actually have multiple ones. And the so-called time frames, which are invariant under time reflection, are special. Time frame is uh, basically where you put your initial time. So time frame, this is one time frame, this is another one, this is another one. And these are the winding associated. The ones that are special in some sense are U1 and U2, the ones that are symmetric around time reflection. And you can show the number of edge states. Uh, at zero energy is given by the average of this, and the number of uh, edge states at pi energy are given by their differences. And uh, here is a way, I mean, a uh, clever way of uh, actually realizing this alternative time frame just by adding two uh, Q plates at the beginning and at the end of the walk. And uh, this is a measurement of this alternative uh, winding, the second winding. And uh, now if you combine the first measurement and the second measurement and you take their mean and their, and their difference, what you get is uh, two uh, correctly, uh, some, uh, an observable that correctly detects the number of uh, zero energy states and pi energy edge states. And uh, well, with this, I come to the conclusions. Uh, so the mean, this mean chiral displacement is uh, an efficient way of capturing the winding of one dimensional chiral systems that works for static, periodically driven, disordered systems. And uh, it's a simple, rapid, and robust detection. And uh, this helped us to detect the topological Anderson transition and uh, characterization of uh, periodically driven uh, systems. 
and well, the open question might be whether this, can, this dynamical observation can be extended to other uh, topological classes. And of course, it would be very interesting to understand whether machine learning can help in uh, detecting uh, topological transitions. So Alex uh, presented some uh, results the other day, said, uh, discussed some uh, applications. I've seen there was a poster on that, and I'd be very interested if anybody has uh, clues on this. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Question for Pietro. No? Okay, so then let's thank uh, all our speakers, Pietro, Gael, and Jose.